Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Chairwoman. Uh, first, let me just say thank you to the panel for being here and your testimony today. I'll introduce myself. I'm Patrick Murphy. I'm a freshman. I was in the Army and I was uh, in the 82nd Airborne Division uh, over in Iraq five years ago. Uh, airborne, that's right, Sergeant Major. Um, Ms. Donnelly, you testified that gays and lesbians cannot serve openly in the military because, and I quote, it will be detrimental to unit cohesion, end quote. In essence, you're basically asserting that straight men and women in our military aren't professional enough to serve openly with gay troops while successfully competing their military mission. You know, as a former Army officer, I could tell you I think that's an insult to me and, and to many of the soldiers. Uh, to answer your question, Mr. Jones, it was 24 countries that allow military personnel to serve openly um, without any detrimental impact on unit cohesion. Ms. Donnelly, can you please justify your position that American servicemen and women are less professional and less mission capable than service members of other foreign militaries? I respect all our men and women in the military. By the way, Dr. Snyder, uh, Captain no, Michelle it's, it's Jones actually is a friend Patrick of mine. Murphy. But I, no. I think the, uh, no, I had to answer the other question because it wasn't put to me directly. Um, I respect all the people in the military, and I think your question is not quite um, the essence of what we're talking about here. If we say that forced cohabitation is the new rule, and we're saying that if you don't like the way you feel, then just relax and enjoy it or tolerate it. Is that fair? Now, oh, I Ms. Donnelly, that's think not actually have, the question. The question have, is, is that you're, you're saying that you do not trust our military professionals to serve openly with other people that don't, me, might not me. be heterosexual when 24 other countries do it. It has nothing about forced cohabitation. Let me finish In your fact, question. we have May segregated you cohabitation. Question? You can, but I don't want you to mischaracterize what my question was, Ms. Donnelly, with okay. all due respect. You said, you said professional, okay? Professional does not mean automaton. It doesn't mean that people are, are not human. People are human. People have sexual feelings and they're not perfect. We know that in the armed forces with all the wonderful men and women we have, we do have issues involving sexuality. Men and women have issues because they're not perfect. Right, Ms. Donnelly, and that's why there's a UCMJ and Army regulations and Marine Corps regulations because if there's misconduct, hold on now, it's my time too. Okay. Now, if there is misconduct, then there are regulations to deal with that misconduct. Yes. But we're talking about orientation, not misconduct here, and that is, the premise of my question to you, Ms. Donnelly, is that you're saying that our military, the greatest military in the world, one I was honored to serve with when I first put the uniform on back in 1993, is not as professional as 24 other countries because they can understand what is right and what is wrong. What would you say to Cynthia Yost, the woman who on a training exercise was assaulted by a group of lesbians? I would say to and her the same thing I say to every single man or woman that serves in the military. Uh -huh. You go to your superior officer and they will get prosecuted under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Are you That's exactly what I'll tell Ms. Yost. She Sergeant could not Alva. even complain because Ms. she Sergeant knew Alva. she would be accused of. You lost your leg in Iraq, and thank you for your service to our great country. As well as you, sir. Thank you. Can you please comment on my question about unit cohesion? Do you not think that a Marine can answer the call of duty if they're asked to by our nation? Yes, sir. In fact, there was, there was two fellow Marines on my convoy that day on March 21st. Losing my leg was an unimaginable tragedy that I would never have, have thought of. But on that convoy that day, and people who were, were aware of my orientation, no one stopped to, to prevent my life from going on. They did their job, that was, which each and every man or woman is when we're going into Afghanistan or Iraq, and that's to take care of each other, accomplished a mission, and I was brought home because those Marines did their job. The unit cohesion was not broken. People did what they were supposed to do. They did their jobs. 